Hebrew language cookbooks that offer recipes from Galilee minorities exist, but there's none in English to compare with this one. With 95 recipes and photographs on every page, The Galilean Kitchen, Cultural Flavors is not only a cookbook but also a window into the landscape and cultures of the Galilee's Druze, Arab, and Bedouin women. Author Ruth Neiman spent a year with eight housewives of those communities, cooking with them and painstakingly translating their measure by eye methods into cupfuls and spoonfuls to create the book's recipes. Be the first to know, join our Facebook page. Function, D, S, I, D, Var, J, S, F, J, S equal D get elements patag name, S, 0, if, D get element beard, I, D, return, J, S equal D creatilment, S, J, S dot I, D equal I, D, J, S, S, R, C equal slash slash connect Facebook dot net slash N underscore us slash all J, S number X, F, B, M, L equal 1 and app I, D equal 1, 6, 3, 4, 1, 4, 8, 0, 6, 8, 9, 7, FJS parent note insert before, JS, FJS, document, script, Facebook JS SDK, her teachers concoct the most delicious food, but don't think in terms of recipes they don't have cookbooks, said Neiman in a telephone interview. Not one has a recipe out of a magazine they cook as their mothers taught them, without measuring anything. I had to stand next to the cook with my measuring cups and spoons and measure each ingredient before she stirred it into the dish, then write it down quickly. Essays on ingredients considered essential staples, such as olive oil and bulgur, bring the patriarchal village atmosphere to life on the page. With a touch of humor, Neiman writes about pressing the olive harvest, debate rages among the Druze producers as to the quality of the oil that is pressed using the old stone press versus using modern machines. Undoubtedly, modern methods yield more oil, but a stronger flavor is definitely produced by the stone press. The argument over the quality has yet to be resolved and may well continue for centuries to come, over a strongly brewed coffee. Many village families maintain vegetable gardens where they harvest their own tomatoes, peppers and other ingredients. In late winter and spring, some of the older women still forage wild greens in nearby fields. A section on springtime greens illustrates some of the wild edibles that good cooks have known how to use to feed their families for generations. Incidentally, this is the time of year when mallows, purslane, and other wild greens noted in this book pop up all over Israel. They will vanish when summer sets in, so this is the time to go foraging they don't shop often, like we do, Neiman noted they have big quantities of free k, bagel, olives and olive oil stored away, and they use what they've got. All the produce is very fresh, very healthy. And their kitchens are so modest. No array of electrical appliances, just the simplest stoves, uncrowded workspaces, old pots and pans. One woman's oven is 25 years old still working, so why change it? Foodways reflect culture, and the traditional foods of the Galilee revolve around agriculture. Wheat is ground and dried as long-lasting bulgur, not as flour, which spoils relatively quickly. Another important wheat product is free K, wheat harvested while still green and roasted briefly in a bonfire.